everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Whiskey Mystery. I'm Phil. I'm Deepa. We're behind a wall of whiskey bottles. Um, tonight we're going to be doing a bit of um, bit of a clear out. <laughs> if you if you glance at the shelf behind, we've had a major clear out. All of these were on the shelf and are now going off. We'll talk about that. Uh, we're going to do a giveaway, and we're going to talk about some of our most expensive and cheap whiskies. There'll be a little game involved there. And hopefully, uh, is Martin in? If Martin comes in, we have a little sample, two samples actually from Martin to try. Nice. So it's going to be a casual, another casual Tuesday. Let's see who who we can see is in. I can't, I can't even reach my buttons from here. <laughs> oh, Alec, first time tuning in. Nice to see you. Caleb's in. Lucky's in. Gregor. Uh, heels, please. Yes. Um, the giveaway. I'm going to restrict it to the US, Gregor, because I'm not sure what the rules are. It's a bit weird. Anyway, we'll talk about that later. Uh, <laughs> Graham Fraser. <laughs> yes, heels. Melissa's in. Ben is in. Mark J. Scotch Buggy. And Whiskey Music. Oh, hi, Whiskey Music. Haven't seen you for a little while. And uh, Greg also. Hola. I'm probably missing some people from earlier on. So after we did our initial, because we talked through the shelf, didn't we? The last, was it last Tuesday we talked through the shelf? But we realized there were still so many overlapped in front that it was just time to go. <laughs> and we thought it would be fun to do uh, a little drawing of people who had previously super chatted from the US and they can choose three bottles, samples of anything on that spreadsheet. Where is it? <laughs> that spreadsheet, which are all the things that have gone off the bottom of the shelf. Is that rude? Only giving away the bottom shelf ones? Anyway, if anyone else wants to join in, just super chat a dollar or whatever the minimum is, and we'll write your name down and we'll throw it into the Abelauer box. Like, so who's in already? Let's see. Uh, Zach Andrews is in. Sean Carroll. Oh, Sean and Aaron. They both just had babies. Congratulations. That's the right people, right? S4D Drew is in. Uh, Sunday Evening Scotch. George Kaplan. King Jacked. Caleb. Aaron. Bloom. Anthony. Macronutus and I'll put Martin in as well, seeing as he <coughs> gave some samples. Right, we should clear the table. <laughs> we should clear the table. So what things have gone off the shelf already? Do you remember Henry McKenna? Not I like it sometimes. Yeah, single barrel, so you never know. Let's put them on the floor as we go. On the floor. We'll have to get them off the table. Oh, so off uh, the floor. Yeah, otherwise we'll be sitting behind this all night. What's that? Ooh, ah, the first one. <laughs> yeah, the one that started it, but it's not really that good. I, I think it's Rimi. Balvini Doublewood. It's very good. I like Dalwini as well. Abelauer Abuna, 60%. It was good, but then it went sort of weird flat at the end. We'll keep this one because it's got the names in it. I'll put it over here. Oh, hey, <laughs> people are in. Chad and Alec, I think you're both going to, hang on. Yeah, Deep is going to write the names down while I, I hit the, uh, <laughs> hit, hey, that one's for you, Chad. Are you in uh, the US? Just make sure you're in the US and I can legally send you, this is a $1 contract. That you are saying yes, you're legal to get uh, whiskey. Uh, let's see. And Alec, <laughs> thank you very much. Let's get get the bottles out the way of all the coins. Cheers, some sipping spring cleaning. Very good. Uh, fantastic. Missed the beginning. Donna Pass is saying live whiskey auctions. <laughs> now we're just doing a little. Um, a little giveaway of some of the older ones. Okay, what else is, uh, not older, things that are off the shelf. Yeah, but we still preferred Old Forester better. Ocantoshin 21, something you could have a taste of. I've taken a little, 
half of Valanche, which is a young, fresh 60%, and mixed it with the older 21, and I'm hoping that might be better. <laughs> what? Say something. Bourbon. <laughs> I quite liked it. It's quite a sweet one. Kilhoman? I the spank was a bit too soft. It's a bit young. A new makey, isn't it? I can't really I remember. remember. Original 24. We don't have any of this left. That's why it's not on that list. Uh, Valkyrie. It's a bit funny. Yeah. It's empty <laughs> as well. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Chris has uh, had some Glenmorangie 10 and Balvini 14 today. Ooh, nice. I, I, I like it. But it's making a sack of the tea at the end. Yeah, this one is, if you can see it, a Thrusk 21 single cask. Gregor! Oh, many, many. Do you have a US address? <laughs> okay, put Gregor in. It might, it might have to go. <laughs> we might have to go cross border. Hey, thanks, Gregor. We'll work it out if your name comes out. Oh yeah, where's the... Throw Gregor in there. A Thrust 21 year old. Single cask. Nice start and a little bit woody finish. And Tomatin 15. I think it's soft. S sort of Highland Park-ish in flavour profile. Okay, let me set these aside. You know what they're for. And let's... Um, I haven't seen Martin in, but he, I did talk to him earlier and he said he probably will be in. So let's uh, let's do a little pour here. Martin A. Is Martin there? Not yet. We'll put A in Aqua Vitae and we'll put B here. I thought, I can see that one is dark and one is light actually. I thought what we would do is I will... I will sip one and tell you about it. You sip yours and tell me about it. And then later on when we reveal them, we'll guess whether we think the other person will like theirs more or ours more. <laughs> Let's pour though. Let's see what uh, Martin has sent. Thank you very much, Martin. This, these have been here for ages. And it was actually uh, when Martin called around. Oh, um, Martin called around. This was before lockdown, so we're talking about mid-March. All right. Mmm, quite good bubbles. In fact, if you shake it here, you can get you can get some sense of the bubbles. Let's see. Can we still see it? Ooh, yeah. I think mine's mine's high ABV. <laughs> right. We'll get, we'll let it have some air. I'm gonna go. Um, where did I put the dropper? Spoon will do it. Oh, you've got the dropper over there. I'm gonna put a little drop in. And drop. So what's everyone been doing? Is everyone still locked up, or is everyone back at work? We're still, we're still kind of locked up. Ooh, I'm on the lighter, fruitier side. Have you got I, sherry? I got my eyes. Sucker. Have you got sherry over there? A bit of sherry, or maybe a little so. Ooh, quite a lot of ABV. Okay, I'm going, nice. I'm going for a little the, sip. Stuff, uh, five. Naked in five. Apricot, beet. Oh, yeah, that's good. It is strong. 50 plus 52, 54. Maybe, but even, but uh, fuck that. This seems like a, a you know, a ex bourbon single cask. Maybe it's an independent bottle. Okay, we'll leave those to get a little bit this of air. One is, uh, um, Baking fruit. Baked fruit. Of apricot, bees, nectarine. So. And um, they, they keep it in is four it, of a... Is it sherry? Yeah, but it's not very sweet. It's just nice. Okay. Right. Let's go to the chat. 
Let's catch up. Hey, Martin is in. I've just seen Martin. Cheers, Martin. We're, um, we've just gone for the pour. I'm sure you just saw it. Donna passed. That athrusk really grew on me. At first, didn't like it. As the bottle went down, it got better. Yeah, it is good. It has softened up quite a bit. In fact, we're going to talk about things going down. Uh, we're going to have a quick look at the shelf. Big difference in color, Chris. Yeah. Fun activity, Phil and Deepa. I like it. Thanks, Michael. Sunday evening scotch. Uh, who else is in? Everyone's... Uh, Oh, Brothers of the Dram. I'm sadly still working. Hang on. King Jack, Brothers of the Dram. I've lost track of names. Confirm who you are, Brothers of the Dram. <laughs> oh, great. Martin can't remember what they are. He can't remember what he sent. Great. So you can guess along with us, Martin. Let's talk about the shelf because there are three that we moved radically. Deanston 12, Glen Allakey, and Glen Gary. Technically, they would have been off the shelf. Deanston probably would have been off the shelf. But we did a little bit of a revisit. Um, well, what did you think of the Deanston 12? I thought it was beautifully grassy. Grassy? Across heaven. Oh, hang on. Hey, Lucky. <laughs> Thanks, Lucky. <gasps> oh. Make it rain. Okay, put Lucky, put Lucky in the box. Hang on, where is the box going? Martin, you're in here as well. Oops. We're going to do a little draw for some samples later. Um, you can look on the, you can look on the spreadsheet to see. Oh, turn the chat off. You can pick any three of these. There's a link somewhere in the chat. Whoever gets it. Right. Deanston. Yeah, we didn't like that Deanston 12 that much at the beginning. And that bottle has sat for about a year. But it's beautiful. And, and another thing is this Glenallachy has sat for many months halfway down. And we didn't like that very much at the start. And the Glengarry was very challenging at the start. It's still a bit of a weird one. But... This, this just tells me that if in doubt, <laughs> just leave the bottle, just wait months and come back. I mean, wait a year, it doesn't matter. Don't rush drinking down through the bottle because they never get worse unless it's the last little bit with a lot of air. Has anyone else got any bottles that they've not really liked at the beginning and really got, you know, a lot better halfway? For me, I'd say the Glen Alecky 12 got massively better halfway down. And I don't know if that's more with younger whiskies that they soften up or, or what, but mm, I don't know. Okay. Let me keep uh, scrolling down here. Hey, Food Quig's in, how are you doing? Brothers of the Dram. Lol, yes, same person. <laughs> I just removed the King Jack from the beginning. Okay. King Jacked is Brothers of the Dram. I thought that because I was looking back through who had super chatted and it was like King Jacked, King Jacked Brothers of the Dram, Brothers of the Jam, Dram King. And then I was like, okay, we've evolved. <laughs> hey, Eric, how are you doing? We are doing fine. Brother. <laughs> no. <laughs> it is it's one person. <laughs> okay, let's have another little sip on Martin's. No, no swapping till later. Okay, I've got a slightly more honeyed note with the, oh, with the lemon. Oh, and it's but no, I mean. It's sort of lemon white fruit, but a little richer. It's really creamy. Creamy. Okay, it's a big fruit. Oh, that's nice. But in that overly sweet, in that sloppy. This is quite sweet. Lemon, melon, with underlying honey as well, though. I think part of it's just sloppy. It's also very similar. <laughs> that just... It's very similar. That's, but but it, do you get a big fruit? I'm getting a little bit of that oak finish. Oh, no. A little bit of the older oak. So I'm guessing this is, this is quite old. Got a bit of a nose. Alcohol nose. 
Hmm. Let me have another sip. And if I need to get a bit on this so... Hey! <laughs> oh, oh, I'm getting a bit of smoke. Thanks, Graham. Oh, that's generous. Graham's, Graham's in the UK, but he says if he wins, he will nominate someone else to get it. Fantastic. I'm getting a shot of powder because it's sort of it's a smoky, but not bitter. This could be. Um, I'm thinking this is a space side in mm, ex-bourbon. I it's similar. It's a bit dark, but it's cherry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, no, no. I would say that I, I land. Highland. Something Highland with the sherry. How old mm. do you think? I think mine could be 18 uh, could be to 20. 18. Could be a bit younger, maybe. Seems to have a long finish. <laughs> right, let's have another little catch up on the chat. Andy KO, the Avalar Abuna took about 10 months and half the bottom, bottle to really open up. Yeah, and I think we got through it too quickly, but we did like it more at the beginning. Lucky, he's on the same page with the Glenallachie 12. Yeah, same thing. Uh, Greg, I just poured an Ardbeg 10. Seems like a second meal. <laughs> hey, Jason Coates is in. Hi, Jason. Lemon, melon, honey. Could be Kleinlish. Oh, oh. King Jack, we've, we've put, uh, put you in twice. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, King Jack. That's... Hey, King Jack. Thank you very much. We've got coins falling through bottles. Appreciate that. I am not even to focus. This is fun. Okay. Maybe it's a bit younger. 12. It's... It could be something like that Dalyuan, that Dalyuan 12. That's where I am. It's very beautiful. Eighteen years. So you think it's older, 18? I thought it's in the island. The area. Highland, well, it could be, a, I mean, it could be like a Glendronic Glengoyne or something if it's Sherry. Balvini. Okay. Do you think you will like mine more than yours? I am I so much. Do you, do you think I'll like yours more than mine? I think you put that you're more than mine. <laughs> okay, I'm going to reveal. In the of smoke. You think there's smoke or barrel no, char? I meant more of a shadow. Earth, earthiness. Earth, earthiness. I think you'll like it. I think you'll like this. I'm going, okay, I'm going with... Um, 12 to 15 year single cask space side X bourbon 52%. Let's reveal this one, then you make your guess. Something like that Dal Yuan. Let's see. Martin, can you remember what it might be? Oh, a moment he's coming in. Oh, hold that reveal. I see Brit. Oh, but but it, it hasn't appeared on the main chat yet. Hang on. Brit, it's, it's going to pop up. We'll come back as soon as it pops up on our warning. Oh, there it is. <laughs> hey, Brit. Thanks for joining in. This is going to be fun. Right, let's see. I don't see Martin give us... We could have asked for clues. Uh, you need to see this. Oh, sample A. Right. I'm going to have to... Let's have a look at the, the ABV. This is, oh, not bad. This one is a Tamdu, 57.1%, but it is first fill bourbon barrel. Oh, it has a rye cask finish for eight months. Hang on, we got whiskey music. Oh, you don't have to send $10. But that is fantastically appreciated. I think you get you get extra <laughs> you get extra gold. We'll have to we'll have to give away more. I think. <laughs> yeah, after the more. 
There you go. Double. Double for whiskey music. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to the cast. So it's a Tam do. And we got 57. I thought 5254. I said 12 to 15 years. But it is first fill bourbon, which is very unusual for a Tam do. Um, just 10 years old, though. But it has a rye cask finish for eight months. So for rye, I should be getting a little bit of kind of um, pickle, right? Something like that. Mmm. Lovely. Right. That is good. Okay, what are you, what are you guessing, Deepa? You're guessing what? I'm guessing it's not in a sherry. And 18 year old. And, uh, sherry, 18 years 50, old. 50, 50, 80, 50, or maybe 48. It's pretty light. 48 to 51. A single cask or an official bottle? Official bottle. Official bottle, okay. Oh, <laughs> Craig, it's uh, it's really busy. It's, uh, oh, Brian. It's our most super chats ever. Double. Okay, that one was for you, Greg. I'm in Canada, so don't enter my name. <laughs> Greg, if you get picked, oh, you, better, yeah, I'm in Canada. you better write a second name, otherwise you won't know who it is. If you get picked, Greg, you can mm. nominate someone in the US. That would be fun. Brianne, this one's for you. Thanks, Brianne. So you're in with... Uh... Oh, to go into... No, that's okay. He can nominate. He can nominate someone. Right. Let's see. I've been missing all the other chat. Hope you guys are having fun. Let's see what the other one that Martin has sent us. Oh. Why don't you look? We'll just compare the two. So we know that this one is 57. So that one's yeah. got to be... It's got to so be up there as well. 55, I suppose. But in the field, it will maybe be got very thick, creamy. So it's not a friend. Okay, so what is oh, it? It's very years. Oh. It's 54, but seven. Let me um quickly show you. It is a 12-year Glen Murray. What a wow. 47. Oh, Bill. Thanks, Bill. <laughs> oh, so generous. Everyone's so generous with the chat. You only need to put one dollar in to um to enter. Thanks, Bill. That's fantastic. Okay. Glen Moray, 12 year, 54.7%. Single cask nation, so it's first fill bourbon for six years, and then first fill Madeira. Oh, I'm giving, I'm giving a thumb up. I put, I put, I put, I can buy this one. Oh, so it's um okay. So it's not sherry. Glenmorey or is it the space side? Glenmorey is a space side. Tamdu is island. I think is Tamdu a highland or a space side? Pour some more of yours. Um. What's that Tam do? I can't remember. Someone will tell us. I think Tam do is a space side, but it might be, might be further up. Now, which one do I think you will think is the better one? I think you're going to stick with this one. Now I'm intrigued to try it. Okay, you try mine. Which one do you think I will like the best? Did you do that yours? Yeah. Oh, that's got a nice nose, hasn't it? Let me take some water. Oh, yeah, that's good. Oh, I, I, I think more. Aha! Uh, <laughs> I was wrong. Because it's more a uh, nervous. More ba abi, banana, yeah. melon. It's this is more in line with the ex bourbon that we've and had. And also soccer, crisper. This part is soft. Mm. It's nice. It's very forgiving. I have both food very much, but I give it an it. Hey, Samuel. Thank you very much. 
I think we're dropping gold coins into glasses now. We need to get them out of the way. Put back to you, prefer. Let me go back. They're both very good. Everybody, my knee. For some move. Yeah. Oh. Now I'm coming back. I think this one, maybe. That for sure. Got it. It's worth it. Fantastic. Okay. Let's. It was worth time, it. Uh, it's brilliant. How long have we been chatting? Twenty-five minutes. Not too bad. Yeah. I'm um, after Tamdu. We have Tamdu. Tamdu is the official bottles are hundred percent sherry. Tamdu doesn't mature anything outside of sherry barrels, according to the documentary I saw. Amazing. So this would be an independent bottler, single cask nation, was it? Who? I'm um, years. Twelve years. So they would have bought Tamdu Spirit. Yeah, single cask nation. What the fuck do you? And they would have put it in their own barrel and warehoused it themselves to do ex bourbon. I think. I think that's how it works. Okay, ready for some numbers and a chart or two? <laughs> Let me catch the chat before we do that. In case there's a. Let's see. You two are most entertaining and informative. Oh, thanks, whiskey music. Uh, Eric, I'd be willing to take one of your nominations. Fantastic. Eric's put his hand up. Smash the like, Eric. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, let's push some buttons. How about some subscribes and thumbs up? Why not? Bill just picked up a single cask nation nine year Kleinlish today. Excited to give it a try. Oh, yeah, that would be good. I'm sure that'll be good. Tamdu is a space side. Thanks, Graham. Um, let's catch up at the bottom. Chad. I'm too much of a rookie to tell, but they taste older than 10. I'd guess there is a good percentage of older stock in them. I'd guess 12 to 14 average. Ooh, I wonder which ones you were talking about there, Chad. Eric, do my eyes deceive me? You have Macallan Classic Cut next to the Glendronic 18. Yes. Okay, well, let's talk about that a little bit. And not only is it next to, it's ahead of which so many people will disagree. The, this um, Glendronic 18, I believe, is a 23-year version. The classic cut is the 2018. And I know when we taste it, it tastes young and brash and obvious. And the Glendronic 18 is much more integrated and subtle. And I understand why people like it better. We, we just haven't liked that integrated sherry with the peppery European oak finish very that much. It was very, very peppery, but very spicy. Yeah. And I think, I think Macallan sherry casks are American oak, aren't they? Maybe? Like Highland Park, which makes it a bit sweeter vanilla. It's very polished. The, the Macallan isn't yeah. polished. No, this is the young and harsh one. Um, oh, there's stuff in there. Let's push these back in line. Get back in line. Let's talk about... Martin, yes, correct. Oh, I'm not sure what we're correct about. Oh, Chad was talking Ugi, about the Ugi. Ugi. Yeah. The classic cut is very hot. <laughs> i tell you what, though. The classic cut has got... Classic cut <laughs> has got some amazing bubbles. You shake that bottle, those bubbles hang around forever. So probably good quality casks, because... Uh, McAllen do control everything end to end. Uh, right, I'm sure we'll learn to like that Glendronic at some point. Let's talk about bottle prices for a minute. I like a bit of nerdy numbers every now and then. Eric saying, I have a chance to get the 2019 Classic Cut for 100. It's my birthday tomorrow and I was thinking of getting it. Well, if you like punchy sherry, Kind of Highland Park, Macallan, you know, they're in the same ballpark with, but the flavors amped up, big bold colors and a little bit harsh because uh, it is younger stuff. Bit of water and a lot of time in the glass. We like it. What can I say? It's a party type. Yeah, Donna, the Glen going 21. It's there, but it is soft. It's too soft. Right. Talking about Glen going, let's bring up. This chart. <laughs> so what's going on here? This chart is a combination 
of whiskey prices that I put together. Actually, it's over a year ago now, so it's slightly out of date. And I looked at Master of Malt and I kind of trawled through all of their prices and I worked out what was the average, where's my button? What was the average price of a bottle if it was a 10 year, 12 year, 15, 16, 17, all the way up. And so the black line represents the average price if you normalize the ABV down to 40%. Of course, if you get cask strength or you get something at 40%, I like to think of it as you're getting more concentrated flavors at 60% for your dollar or pound or euro. <laughs> and so I wanted to know how do different whiskies compare based on normalizing the ABV to 40%, just so that they were all mathematically the same, but then also dollars per year. We'll talk about that in a minute. And this chart represents Glen Goyne's different age groups. So each orange dot here is Glen Goyne 10, Glen Goyne 12, 15, 18, which is actually a little above average, the 21 and the 25. So Glen Goyne really follows the curve almost perfectly. And so obviously if you've got whiskey maturing for 25 years or 21 years, it is going to be more expensive. So then I wanted to know, well, how much are you paying normalized to 40% and then per year? I know it's stupid, isn't it? It doesn't mean anything to do with taste, <laughs> but I like, you have spreadsheet. <laughs> I like a spreadsheet where you can, you can play with these numbers. And so something like, let's see, Let's pick something, something like this. And you can do, you can do a little guessing game. Actually, let's clear the table. Uh, you put them on that side. Here we have Springbank, 15 year old, 46%. This costs us $133. So this comes in at $7.70 per year. <laughs> Uh, where's my oh, other side? Hey, Melissa. Fantastic. Thanks, Melissa. Melissa's super chatting. So, $7.7 per year. <laughs> Papa, got money. Yes, I've done, I've done dollars. So let's pick, let's throw something else in there. Uh, what do you think? No, not that one. Not that one. What about Craig Ellicky 17 and Craig Ellicky 23? Do you think they are more or less expensive per year? I can tell you that the Craig Ellicky 13 is only three and a half dollars per year at 40 ABV. <laughs> oh, let's see. Uh, Caleb, what's Caleb saying? I think that the common sizing approach is spot on. While not a judgment on taste, it makes comparing price a lot more effective. Lucky is saying, man, I got two bottles of Glendronic 18 this year, just because the chart says it's 24 years old. You are probably right. Ah, we haven't tried the, the 15 yet. <laughs> Eric. I'm going to put it the front. No, it's fine. It's a good... Okay. Well, I can tell you. So seven... $6.7 per year at 40 ABV. The 17 year Craig Ellicky comes in at 6.7. So it's cheaper. And the eight, uh, the 23 comes in at 8.8. .8. So no big surprises there, right? So we have, well, the 17 is cheaper than the 15. We need it in more expensive. Yeah. So we're cheaper on this side, middle, more expensive. Let's throw something else out there. What about, what about Booker's? which is only, uh, how old's Booker's? Six years, seven? I forgot. No, keep them there, because I'm, I'm going to move stuff either side. Booker's versus Springbank Local Barley. <laughs> Donna Pass is saying the Craig Ellicky is expensive, the 17. This 17 cost $130. And um, same price as the Springbank 15. So I'm not sure, okay. Booker's comes in at 5.7. I'm just saying what we paid. And 
the local barley, tick, 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 is more expensive. This is only the nine-year-old. And this is 11.5. So it is more expensive than the Craig Elegy if you want to price it this way. <laughs> Octomore, $30 a year, Greg. Well, you know what? You are absolutely right. Look at my label. $30 a year. Even though... You got this? Even though it is 60 ABV, the price, at, I think this cost us 230 This is the Octopore, Octomore 9.3. So at $30 a year, it is way... I don't know how far we can push this up the table. Right to the edge. <laughs> So we're talking 30, then 11. Right. What about, what about good old Isla Barley 2007? I'm going to pull up the others so you can start to see. We've got a Bal Blair. We've got a Kilhoman, Loch Gorm. Ooh, what about a Rosebank? A Rosebank 21 cask strength. Uh, we have a 27 year Cameron Bridge here and two more to throw in. There's our St. George Baller and Westland Gariana. Right. Brook Laddie, Isla Barley. Five, no. Six, no. Seven, no. About to get. Eight, no. Eleven. It's right in here. Because it's only a six-year-old whiskey. I just about to guess for this. Yeah, but it takes such a long time for comments to come back. Kilhoman, Loch Gorm. Uh, $98. Where does this go? Tick, 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 tick. Surely somewhere in here. Nope. Have you already made a gap? Deepa's ruining the fun. Oh. If you make a gap, oh, then oops. they're going to know where it goes. Oh. <laughs> I didn't need to about it. Tipa likes, you know, when, when we're telling stories, Tipa likes to jump in with the punchline before I've got the story out. 15.7. So that means that Loch Gorm is more expensive than local barley on this scale. I've been shot, but I've not shot it through yet. Let's, um, let's, let's see. We've got five, five to go. What are we thinking? What's the most expensive in this group? This Bal Blair, by the way, is the 1983, making it 31 years old. Oh, I've forgotten. I think it's 30, isn't it? Or 31. I won't get the bottle out. What do you think? I can tell you this cost over $300. Where would this go? Uh, Obviously, it's somewhere up here, isn't yeah. it? Eight point eight and eight point eight. It is exactly the same as the Craig Elliki Twenty Three. It's in the middle of the pack. I think it's more. It's better to be but somewhere. It's because it's a thirty-year-old bottle. Right, we're down to. Um, George Baller. Uh, it's only an eighty-dollar bottle. It's made locally in San Francisco. Let me see. Hang on. Sunday evening scotch. Whoa! That old particular bottle looks like it has black and white effect next to the colourful bulb blare. <laughs> oh, which one? This one. <laughs> uh, Eric, it may only be eight year, but that Isla Barley is magic. Yes. The 2007, Eric, have you got some? It is very good. Rosebank will be the most expensive, Graham. Uh, Gregor, have you factored in whiskey gasm factor? <laughs> I haven't managed to work that into a spreadsheet yet. Deepa has me laughing. <laughs> Melissa laughing at you. Baller is horrific. <laughs> I've heard bad things about it. So anyway, at least it's not too expensive, right? Where would you put Baller on the scale, Deepa? Where? I saw, I saw. Okay, well, don't tell people. No, no, no. 
No. Why is it going up here? It's a three-year-old a bottle. Stock. A furry, furry, furry Hang on. Stock. No. Wow. <laughs> stock. Move I them down. It is twenty-two. I'll come. I'll come. Twenty-two point seven dollars per year. It's a it's a three year old whiskey. I'm so not worth the price. <laughs> and as Gregor tells us, it's terrible. <laughs> it's one of those whiskies that sells out amazingly because it's a very small production at a very small oh. distillery just across the bay. We we both there. <sighs> Martin. Wow, would love to find a Balblair 88. Uh, this one's 83, but that's probably what you meant. I saw it for sale somewhere online recently. Craig Elke 23 is 4.99 in Arizona. Oh, Samuel, don't buy it there. Go online to um, Remedy Liquor or High Time. If Fine. They've, if they've got any left. Can you get, can you get stuff shipped into Arizona? Uh, Craig Ellicke, uh, where are we? Craft distillery trying to recoup costs way too early. Yeah, Gregor, I understand. I understand. I mean, Alameda, it's not exactly the cheapest place in the country, is it? Uh, I didn't care for that baller either, Sunday Evening Scotch is saying. I had it at a whiskey event recently, ended up dumping it. <laughs> well, it's in our blind tasting somewhere. Right. Um, which one's more expensive? Obviously, we have uh, Westland Gariana. And we have, do you want to have a look inside this bottle, this box? Can we see it? Maybe this, maybe the other camera. Oh, maybe that's a little better. This is the Diageo special release from uh, 2011. Let's see if we can get it on the close up cam. I could tilt up. There you go. 53.8% and look it's even got its own little blanket <laughs> oh no I asked the number oh yeah I hide the number well done Deepa and I know it looks like we've drunk it all already but this was split with a local and um it's not even in our blind taste yet. And I don't know if we'll put it in our blind tasting or we'll just drink it for what it is. Now, it is gassed, so. Right, so Rosebank is not a cheap bottle. Oh, hang on, I need to see the label. Right, got that one. Okay, how's the guesses? Uh, ball is perfect example where unique doesn't always mean good, <laughs> Gregor. Where is Rosebank made? Never heard of it. Eric, uh, Rosebank is a closed distillery and um, it's got a bit mythical, I guess, Rosebank now. Okay, here we go. Where's the Rosebank going? <laughs> No. Did you did you make a gap there? Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> nothing goes me. It goes just below baller at seventeen fifty. Gonna have to move things along. So where does Westland go then? Westland Gariana. Westland Gariana is our most expensive bottle, $39 per year. And I can tell you that Cameron Bridge 27 year old is our cheapest bottle at $2.4 per year because this is a grain whiskey and it's at 54.3 um, ABV from a refill sherry butt. And um, we have shared a bit, but we haven't tasted it. So look at the scale of the, the difference when you have $2.4 per year versus 
$39 per year. It's the artisan, you know, it's the artisan. Yeah. Fast. And everything in between. I like a good spreadsheet. I wonder what it tastes like. We could just have a little sip right now. It's still waiting to go into the blind tasting. Okay, let's clear the table. Just uh, put them down on the ground. I'll carefully clear the rose bank. Has everyone seen that video of Ralphie's rose bank on a windy day? Go and look up ralphie.com YouTube channel for rose bank on a windy day. And then you can learn something about rose bank and be entertained. Right. And everyone knows a grain whiskey is just not malted barley, right? It's um, gone through a column still, presumably. Where'd I put my, oh yeah. Oh, right. We shall, we should do our draw. We're gonna, we're gonna wrap up with the draw. Let's, uh, let's go back over comments. Let's Oh, you have to have both. Oh, only this. I'm just going to read the comments. Let me try again. Oh, I see. Yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to buy. Go back over. Mmm. Very sharp in the focus. Sharply in focus. Mmm. It's so yummy. Benefits, Emily. Mmm. Melon. Sock. Wow. It's a bit simpler, and there's a little bit more complexity in there. And the start is lovely sweet honey melon. That's why I thought we order everything we got very creamy, beautifully integrated. The finish is slightly. And it's sort of softer, pearly focus. Softer focus. The finish is slightly into the old grey oak, which I don't like so much. So I really like the first seventy percent, and then the very end, I'm like, oh, it's just got that little grey grey oak thing. The, the finish it is a bit shorter. A bit. Yeah. That's more balanced overall. Oh, very nice. I think. Double bubble, you buy it again. I think I'm just edging. We got a yeah, ABV. Edging towards that one. Okay, I was supposed to be doing chat. Uh, oh, Lord. $68 per year. What was that, John? What was $68 per year? It wasn't the um, the Gariana, $39 per year. What's 68? I missed that. Graham, Rosebank is just selling casks strength 1993. The last casks filled at two and a half thousand a bottle. Wow. Um, that bottle did cost about 500 and something dollars. Uh, it was in a store across the bay. Uh, the props for opening a bottle like Rosebank 21. <laughs> yeah, I keep debating, should we just put it in the blind? But there's such a little bit left now. Oh, actually, we have a little sample from Roy Aquavite of the 12 year Rosebank. And it's actually the bottle that Ralphie gave to Roy on his live and we have a little sample. So at some point we have to do the compare. For a second, I forgot we had moved away from off the shelf portion of this. Almost fell out of my chair. <laughs> That's good, Caleb. Most expensive is Rosebank. Mm, it's expensive, but not really, is it? I mean, it is. Don't get me wrong. I think I've, uh, mm. I've lost the chat. I've lost the chat. So how's this draw work, Phil? Winner selects, yes. Let's go back to the draw. Martin said that it's very nice. So, in this document, these are all the bottles which are in the off the shelf and we still have some left. And whoever wins can pick three of those and I will send them out. And we'll fill up 365 mils. But you know, because we've had so many super chats, 
I'm going to draw three names. You, you draw. You draw. So we're going to do three winners. The first winner is... S for D. Hey, <laughs> it's Drew from Scotch for Dummies. That's funny, Drew's not in tonight, but I'll have to tell him. So the first one, the first one is Drew. Now you break. Because Drew super chatted twice earlier on, and I put everyone in who super chatted in the past. Okay. This one is going to be. Oh, Caleb. Caleb. Nice. That's going to be the second one. You pick. No, you pick last one. Hold it up to the camera. Ready? The third one is going to be... Anthony. I don't think Anthony's in tonight. Is Anthony in? I didn't see his chat earlier, but he super chatted in um, a previous episode. So I will have to send a comment to those people. As you have Drew's contact, that's easy. Anyone who's watching who is either Caleb, <laughs> Drew, or Anthony Macroniotis. <laughs> Sorry. Send me an email at whiskey at captain3d.com. I should have a button for that, but I don't. But if you go to my about page on YouTube and you can click a link, but it's whiskey without an E at captain number three letter D dot com. Thanks everyone. And thanks, Martin, for the lovely drinks. I have to book it. I will book this one. Hey, Caleb. There you go. I see Caleb. Uh, it's nice that Caleb was in. Good stuff. We'll do... Um, you get this stuff material for this. Yeah. Hmm. We'll have to do some more giveaways. Oh, just got a little bit full strength there. We will see you all on Thursday for Matt E's number 81. Here's a little teaser. Seeing as it's in the shake bottle. Oh, you can't see it because I tilted the camera. How are those bubbles looking? Mmm. We will be tasting that one and we will see you all on Thursday for another blind reveal of bottle number 80. Thanks for joining in. Thank you. We will uh, see you all later on. Hope you all have a, a good evening. <laughs> yeah. Cheers.